What's going on, Phoenicians? Today is August 6th, 2015. It is 70 years since the atomic bombing of Hiroshima, and I am right by ground zero at this very moment. Right over here is the Genbaku Dome, the A-bomb dome as it's known, and there's actually people inside of it. I don't know if you see that. Looks like there's people inside of it conducting measurements, and a lot of this has been untouched since the horrible explosion. The metal, the rocks still laying there, some of the trees are growing out of it, but that's what happened. That's what's left of it. Right here at this exact spot. Right here. 8.45 in the morning, 70 years ago, a bomb exploded right there that wiped out this entire city. The blast was directed downwards above the Shima Hospital, which is this hospital right here. The director of it, Mr. Shima, or Dr. Shima, he, uh, he was on a trip at that time, so he was lucky enough to be spared from the bomb. Right here, the hypocenter. It's just right up this way. About a thousand feet that way, that's where it exploded and just went straight down. There is a lot of people here today, understandably so, and there's a lot of signs that say no more nukes. I have to agree with them. This is nuts. So from that building over there, the blast was directed this way. Now the blast was downwards, so buildings like this that were reinforced with concrete survived quite well. Now this bridge, the Aoi Bridge, that was the aiming point for the uh, bombardiers. And the wind was really strong that day, so the bomb was pretty much flown that direction. I'm facing north right now. So that's the IOA bridge right there. And there's the park. It's really kind of surreal being here, just seeing everything. There's a cruise book one up in the stream, the stream here. Like, just imagining the destruction from so long ago. Pictures from the 1960s and 1950s showed how quickly this city rebuilt. And like I've always said, Japan has been known to rebound very well from disasters. And Hiroshima should be in a testament to that.
So that Bombardier was looking for this, right here. This exact spot. And as soon as he saw it, that thing dropped and went that way. Because of the crosswinds. The Iowa Bridge is a T-shaped bridge, as you can see here. And this is a very nice looking bridge. It was rebuilt after the war as a replica. The Peace Clock Tower. It is sometimes uh, considered that Hiroshima's birthplace of the Thousand Crane Monuments or the Thousand Crane Wish. Basically, this was a, a child named Sadako. Sadako Sasaki. She was badly injured and stricken with illness by the atomic bomb. And while she was in the hospital, she made a thousand cranes with the hope that after completing it, she will be cured of, of her illness. And she passed away before she could finish. And the tradition here is to make a thousand cranes and pray for peace. And thus, this monument is dedicated towards Sarako and for peace, the Hiroshima Children's Monument. This is the center of the park here. This is the Eternal Peace Flame. One of the internal flames here in Japan. Next to an infinity pool. The Japanese flag lowered at half mast.
These two were just posted right here about an hour ago. It's pretty intense. You can pause it and read it as you wish. This appears to be a uh, anti-war, anti-nuclear, anti-bomb uh, protest, and it also seems to be uh, something to do with uh, a few other things too. Okinawa. Uh, they seem very peaceful. It appears to be the same group that was opposing Abe in Shibuya a few weeks ago. Here's a second uh, protest group right here. There's actually a third group right back there. <laughs> See the protest from up here from my hotel room. It's pretty crazy. Okay, I just got back to my hotel room. I'm really tired. I was outside all day. I'm sweaty. My hair is probably a mess. My voice is almost gone. I can still hear the protesters outside. But that, I just wanted to say a couple of things in regards to the, uh, uh, the museum. It was a really moving experience, as you saw. And I highly recommend you guys come over here, no matter what your position is on the atomic bomb. And that's what I wanted to talk about because, I mean, for me, I still have this firm belief that the bomb was necessary in order to stop Japan's aggression. Because if we didn't drop that bomb, that war would have continued for a lot longer. And millions upon millions of lives would have been sacrificed. And I see the bomb and I see the uh, peace monument and everything like that as a uh, symbol of the sacrifice Hiroshima made to stop the war. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So that's why I feel like it was a bit necessary. But you know, these days though, I don't want any nuclear weapons anymore. It's you know, not necessary. Nuclear anything seems to be very dangerous to me. So I'm going to freshen up, get a shower, relax a bit, and then I'm going to take this camera out. And, uh, well, you guys already saw the vlog yesterday, so you guys are going to see that. 
at the time of this recording, I had no idea what I did, but you guys know. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for coming along with me on this uh, little journey. It was definitely a worthwhile experience, and I highly recommend you guys come down here yourselves. So here you go. Hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe. I make these videos all the time. So I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, Phoenicians. Hey guys, it's me again. I'm, I actually uh, wanted to add something on to the very end here. I'm not sure if I'm going to focus right now. Am I? I don't know. Anyway, a lot of you guys, uh, a lot of people question about uh, why, uh, about the necessity of all this peace memorial stuff. Or uh, a lot of people think that uh, Hiroshima or Japan is playing the victim card here. But that is totally not the case. As you can see clearly with those protests, and even with all the pamphlets I've gotten, Everything on there blames, at some point, Japanese aggression for the war. So the people of Hiroshima, the operators of those museums, definitely know that Japan was the aggressor in the war. And they were, you know, the Hiroshima is one of the, you know, biggest anti-war cities in the world. They are, in, they are by no means trying to play a victim card here. I mean, yeah, sure, they try to you know, tell people that, you know, the atomic bomb wasn't necessary and stuff like that. That's fine. That's part of the debate. That's why we have this debate. I just discovered a closet in here. But that's, you know, the, the, the thing is, is all this memorial stuff is definitely just showing that the people of Hiroshima, at the very least, show a lot of remorse for the war. And that's something that should be taken into mind when someone visits here. That's what I wanted to, the, that's what I wanted to add to the end of this, so. Hope you guys uh, really enjoyed this video. I'll see you on the next video. Take it easy, Phoenicians.